Welcome, welcome. Hi everyone, it's Saturday afternoon and we're gonna sew a fur jacket, a faux fur, I should say faux fur, I say fur all the time, because um, it's a fur jacket, but I guess a lot of people really want to know that it's faux or real, this is a faux. And um, it's just really fun to be here, I'm really excited. Like I cut it out a couple days ago and I thought, I'm just gonna sew it. I thought, no, I can't do that, I have to wait for y'all. <laughs> But I've been very excited to, to get it. It's a perfect time of year to be wearing, you know, fur. It's just really a fun time. So the goal is to help you see how easy it is. And I think for me, you know, I've sewn for many years. We all have. And we have cotton and we have silk and we have all those beautiful fibers. It's so much fun to add something new and different in. And I don't sew, sew with fur that much. I haven't. And so it's really fun to just do something completely different, especially today. My goal is to help you see how easy it is. And we're going to sew, I think I counted 11 seams. Is that right? Did I count 11? 11 seams. So 11 seams to get a great fur jacket. And I did last Thursday night um, because I really wanted you to see what's current with fur. I think some people, depending on where you live, have an idea that it's going out or it's not being sold. That just couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, that's why I showed you Saks out of New York and Neiman's out of Texas. I wanted you to see that fur was available through many, 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 many sources. So just to give you an update kind of to see what we're doing and how we're doing it, that's all. But it's a lot of fun and you can do a lot of really simple projects that are really nice looking. It's just, it's beautiful. This fur is from Donna Salyers, a faux fur, I should say, sorry, this faux fur. We're gonna do pattern number 600 today, which is the classic blouse. And the reason I chose it is because of really its simplistic nature. Remember that um, I have a concept that whenever you have a complex fabric, you want a simple pattern. Whenever you have a um, complex pattern, you want simple fabric, solids to go with. So you don't wanna pair complex with complex because it just gets to be too much and you're doing really a lot of work that doesn't need to be done because you can't see it anyway, especially with fur. So we're going to just really, I'm so excited for today, but I do wanna answer some questions. If right now you have any questions, just to kind of start off, I'd like to get them off of your head so that you're not thinking about them the whole time that we're sewing. I'm actually not gonna sew this, I'm gonna serge the jacket today. I'm doing an unlined jacket. I'm gonna show you how to line it if you decide you wanna line it, not a big deal either way. Um, and so I want those seams to be finished on the inside. And the backing on the faux fur is just really, really beautiful. Um, so I'm gonna just, it's like a knit backing. I don't think it literally is a knit, but it sure looks and feels like a knit. Yeah, there's no stretch to it, but it's really nice and it's really soft. And I don't know, lining is cosmetic. So I personally don't think it needs to be lined. But certainly, again, we'll talk about how you, if you want to, you can, okay? All right, so let's ask, ans sorry, answer questions off the top. And like I said, we'll get those kind of clear your heads to where you can really sit and listen and just enjoy. And hopefully, maybe you're sewing along. But if not right now, you guys know you can do it after this is over. We're probably not going to be long. And um, we'll get this done in no time. Uh, can I use the 195 pattern? So 195 is geared for a knit. And you can use any base pattern you want. The goal is to use something that needs the least amount of change. So the 600 needs the least amount of change because it's the right amount of ease already. And because I'm gonna be doing a sleeve in this, um, if I use the 195, the sweater set, I have to change the sizing. Uh, extre extreme because 195 has a negative ease and now I'm going to have a garment that has ease because I'm making a jacket and then I'd have to completely obliterate the, the sleeve. So can you use that pattern? You could use any pattern, but I'm trying to get you to see, to use the least amount of changes as possible. That was why I'm gearing you to 600. You can use any pattern, but just understand that this faux fur fur is not a, a knit. It's a woven, so I'm gonna use a woven base, okay? What causes skip stitching when sewing furs? Not the fur. The skip stitching would be caused um, something with your sewing machine. Doesn't have anything to do with the fur. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do it on the sewing machine just so you can see, but I sewed this one the other day. I sewed, I kind of sewed it half and half because I just wanted to make sure both 
machines handled it without a problem and they did so skipped stitches a lot of times is just how you're how it's wound you know how it's threaded try rethreading your machine but it's not a fur issue it's a machine issue i hate to say that sorry what's the best type of patterns what is the best type of patterns that you've used with faux fur as a muslin fabric for real fur um i'm not sure i understand that question but what would you use as a muslin oh i see what you're saying any woven fabric any woven fabric would be fine to use it would it would really just be very similar to a blouse pattern the fur you know i can't say it's not thick because you know we we have these big boxes that we're mailing the fur in but it just doesn't you know it's i'll stand up here in a minute we got to fix the camera so i i can't have our you know our camera guy's doing something else right now so we'll give him a little bit of a break but i'll just show you i'll stand up so the other night when I filmed this, I couldn't get the lights right and I didn't have time to figure it out. So that whole intro part was really dark. We knew that. Today we're sewing on black. It is hard to see black. Just use, listen to what I'm saying and use um, your hearing. Hear what I'm saying as opposed to just seeing it. We are going to do it on the surgery. We've got the camera. We're going to come up close so you can see as, as well as you possibly can. But it's so simple that I don't overcomplicate it. But once we're done, like I said, I'll, I'll stand up and I'll show you that I think shaping is very important. So I think it's really important to have darts if I'm doing a fur jacket of any kind. And then I'm going to show you a fur jacket, a couple of fur pieces that we have on the, on the dress forms. Okay. Would I use real fur as a muslin? Um, I kind of did, but I've made the blouse so many times. I've made pattern 600 so many times. I couldn't figure out what would be the problem. And so when I did arrive at what the problems would be, it would be length. So I cut it longer, figuring I could always cut it shorter. I cut the sleeves, figuring that if they were too long and I wanted three quarter, I could cut them shorter. So my issues were length issues. They weren't depth issues and they weren't circumference issues. So I did, this was kind of my muslin. <laughs> so it just depends on how many times you've made 600 up and how comfortable you are with that fit. Is it necessary to taper at one half inch from center front so the fronts hang close? No. No, it, that should be all included in your in your circumference issue. The the fronts is it necessary to taper out one half inch out from center front so the fronts hang closed? Um, so I went down in size. I think you're trying to, I, I think I, I understand what you're saying. Any alteration you make to center front, you have to make to your collar. So I wouldn't do that. Just go down in size. That way all your pieces will be correctly related to one another and then you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So instead, if you don't want it to close like a blouse, just alter the circumference down either a size or half size something you know to put on a blouse and see how much overlap there is and then decide from there okay is there anything you would do differently when sewing real fur with stitch length or tension no i didn't do i'm going to show you a real fur we had it on a webcast i wore it when we had the furs um a little earlier or you know i mean earlier in the year really it was last year 2020 uh, i can't believe it's march already but um, when we had the real fur, I sewed that little jacket and I wore it. And I'm going to show that to you because it's the same exact thing. I didn't do anything different at all. So um, I, I don't see any difference in sewing the real fur and sewing the faux fur. I will say one thing that in pressing, you cannot press a faux fur. You cannot iron a faux fur. Um, you can iron the back. But if you iron the front, it, um, it does not handle heat whereas a real fur will handle heat without problems. So do not iron. I, d I don't even have an iron here today. We're not ironing at all. You don't need to. The seams hang beautifully after you sew. So if you hate to iron, you're in luck. No ironing today. All right. Why did you not choose a jacket pattern? Um, because I didn't want the, I didn't want a shoulder pad in the jacket I was making, the fur, I wanted a little more casual jacket. Um, it's not necessary to have a two-piece sleeve because I was doing a three-quarter sleeve. These are good questions though. 
Um, you're just trying to see where I'm thinking. I didn't want the number of pieces, but you could. You could have the number of pieces and you could take away that shoulder pad. Um, but again, I really wanted to show you the simplicity rather than trying to make it too complex. I wanted to go simpler and because I really wanted you to see that really everybody can do this without a lot of time and with very basic sewing skills. So my mind was thinking simplicity, not complexity. Not that a jacket is just more seams, but again, I was going to the simplistic side. Can you wash a faux fur and if yes, what to pay attention to? You can wash this. This is all washable. Just cold water, tumble dry. It's, that's no problem to wash it. Just don't, don't iron it. And don't put it with a fabric that needs ironing. You Like if you're making a throw, which is something I did last week, you want to do it with a fabric that's really, um, you know, doesn't. It, it's a low maintenance fabric, whatever that is. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm going to stand up. And I think if I stand up, I'll be out of the camera, but we'll fix it. I'm going to cam stand up and I'm going to show you this because I, do I just don't think it's really bulky. I think that's the, really the takeaway that I want you to see. I've got it on with just a long sleeve t-shirt and then it just stays, you know, it's right there in the front. I, I put this front in particular on the selvage. I did on this one today too. Um, but what you want to do is recognize that fur is going to have a little bit of bulk to it. And so you want to wear something, either jeans, leggings, something close to your body, um, and then like a t-shirt underneath, or that's why I'm doing a shorter jacket here. I want to look at a couple of these jackets here though. Let's go over on the dress forms. Um, this one was the real fur. This, um, it's kind of a wine color. And if you remember, I did this um, for spring, I mean, I'm sorry, for holiday, and I left open the sleeve. You can kind of go back on the webcast because we showed how to do that. And so when I'm doing that, I don't need a two-piece sleeve to do that. Um, I did not, I put a little clasp here. These, these fireman hooks are just awesome for this. But I'm not gonna put it on today because I think it dresses it up and really what I wanted was to have a very casual look. The inside is beautiful, but it's just the suede side of the fur. So you have to really look at how is the fur finished, if it's real fur and if you're okay with that showing. And in this case, I was. So then if we come and look at this, I like, I love this look. This is this melange. So um, yeah, this is a melange and it's 41, I forgot my fabric numbers. I have a cheat sheet, it's 4128. And this was this little wrap that we did. But even so, you can see the back of this is really matches the front. And we just put a little slit in there and it's just a great look. I mean, especially for now where, you know, we just need a little bit of warmth around our neck. I think it's just so attractive, a white little t-shirt and I have a gray little cardigan on there. So neither one of these are lined. I've worn both of them and I don't have any issues with them. I did not line the one I have on. Um, I love them. I mean, I just really, really, <laughs> this has been really fun for me. Selfishly, I probably did this so that I could, you know, dip into a little fur, few, few fur coats for not a lot of money. All right, so then with that, let's start sewing. Let's start sewing. I gotta make sure I'm not sitting on cords. And like I said, um, so I kind of went over the whole cutting out thing and I wanted to do that with you before today so that you, if you were cutting yours out, you could have a little time to go ahead and cut those out. Those are my sleeves. I'm gonna put them down on the ground there. This is my collar. I'm gonna put that down there also. Keep in mind that once you cut out, you've really gotten, you've really done with all your mess. And honestly, I, I've really been amazed at how little mess this is. I think it's because the quality is so much better that the fur is so tight and it, it's beautiful. I mean, it, it's really, I've really enjoyed working with it. So this is my front and I didn't make any changes to this. I did change the neckline and I did that to do the same collar as this. I love this collar. It's a little bit lowered. It's the one I showed you Thursday night and I just really love it. So when I lengthened the neck edge and changed it, it gave me two inches to make the collar longer and so I did those changes. And everything you can refer back to um, Thursday night, to that Thursday night video. Even though you can't see it, it's dark in the beginning and you can't see me, but once, you know, the directions are really good. Okay, so one of the things you were supposed to do was you can see I cut out the dart. Now don't, when you're cutting out the dart, don't cut on those lines like you do a French dart because those lines are stitching lines. So I added uh, 
a, a three eighths of an inch inside those lines. So I'm stitching it like a French dart. The middle's been cut out, but just don't cut out that, you know, the whole, don't cut on those lines. You'll, you'll make your dart larger. All right, so we're, like I said, we're gonna start here. I'm gonna, when you do this, let's just come close in this very beginning and then you can go from there. So there's the two lines that I'm putting together. And I know this is black, so hard to see. I'm just gonna tuck all the fur inside there. And so I'm just pushing that fabric together. And every time I go to sew, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Do you ever line fur? Of course you can, absolutely. Um, no, really no big deal either way if you want to or if you don't want to. So you can see that as I start, I'm just pushing all the fur inside. And this is the dart. And as soon as I finish this, I wanna show you this seam because the whole reason you want darts is because they just don't show and they do so much benefit. See, now I can pull that, kind of just run it like that with your fingers, just kind of pull it out. And you can see where you're not even gonna be able to see that dart. Isn't that beautiful? We discuss how to add a zipper and what to do about ease in the sleeve. Um, well, I can discuss about a zipper. I'm not gonna put a zipper in. Zippers and fur don't really like each other. The fur gets in the zipper. So if you're gonna add fur, I'm sorry, if you're gonna add zipper to a fur, which you can do, but I would probably add like a leather strip or a piece of fabric or something that gets the zipper away from the fur. Otherwise, every time you're zipping that zipper up and down, you're gonna be fighting the fur. And you know, you can do it, but just think about getting the zipper away from that fur. Um, and then, do you ever line, there was another part to that question, I don't remember what it was. Oh, ease in the sleeve. They'll ease in just, I'm going to ease them in just like I do a regular blast sleeve. Then they do have ease in the sleeve. Um, this is pattern 600. I haven't altered the pattern at all. Okay, I mean, I just love that. I love the way that looks. I just can't believe there's a dart in there and you have to like, you can't see where it is. I just think it's too cool. All right, so that's one dart. We just did that and I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Got all my pieces here and I have I have lined fur yes so let's talk about when we are lining fur and and why again you would do it really just cosmetically there's no um, there's no reason to I mean lining period is cosmetic it doesn't matter when I'm doing it on a jacket it's always cosmetic I can't think of another reason you line so In this case, if you decide to line, you're going to, I, I would just simply cut another layer that's just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna kind of show you when we do the collar. You'll see, look at that, you can't even see that dart, is that awesome? But you can really see how it shapes that piece. It really gives it kind of a cupped advantage. And what that's gonna do is, Instead of hanging the garment straight from your bust, it's gonna bring it back into your body, which is always a positive. All right, so this is my back. And I'm gonna make sure I've got the right pieces together. And then with every seam you do, you're simply going to put the fur like inside. Just make sure it's inside and sew away. If you're counting seams, we've done two so far. And then the shoulder seams are three and four. If you guys want me to do a seam on the sewing machine, I'm happy to do that. Either way is really simple. Keep in mind that nobody sees the inside of your garment anyway, so if you don't want to do it on the serger, that's fine. Whatever works for you guys, that's the goal. Okay, again, when you turn that inside out, the fur will kind of stick up a little bit. Eventually it'll settle, but that's the shoulder seam. I think in some regards it's so much easier than many other fabrics because it seems like you kind of have, I don't know, like error 
factors built into it because there's, it's so fluffy you can do a lot with it. All right, so this is my next shoulder seam that we're going to do. Where'd I go with my scissors? Okay, so there's the body of my little jacket. And if you feel like you want to try it on, you can. Obviously, when you're cutting it out, see how straight those... One thing I love about the vertical fox is it has the lines in it, and so it really does... It's just so pretty. It's really beautiful. It's very rich looking, but I think it's just so much fun to throw it on with a pair of jeans. That's what I'm really looking forward to doing is just really mixing it up a little bit. Okay, so I've got the two darts done. I've got the two shoulder seams done. I'm going to do the collar just so you can kind of see what's going on. So this is what I lengthened when I cut it, and then I also just did a mandarin. I didn't want a, a high collar. It's the same one I have on, but I just wanted a little mandarin. So this little collar, it's about three inches wide, but that's before I so take away two seam allowances. So you can see it's pretty narrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna sew it to my jacket first. And I'm gonna do that on the sewing machine because I'm going to sew a second time on that same seam I'll kind of show you. And so I think it will be um, a little easier if I don't do serger over serger. So the first seam I'm going to actually do with the sewing machine. All right, so I'm going to start with the obviously the right sides together. And I'm going to pin this. And one thing I would recommend you not do is don't run over a pin on your sewing machine when it's on fur. A lot of times when you run over a pin, and I run over them all the time, you guys have seen me sew, and, and I know that my machine can handle it. So different machines can handle different things. But the problem is, is the fur is, is more dense, and the, the needle has nowhere to, it can't just shift to the side because there's just, it's too dense. So a lot of times it breaks as opposed to being able to shift. So if you're a person who runs over pins all the time when you're sewing, I would recommend that when you're doing fur, you kind of cease that just for, you know, just this particular garment. Okay, so I'm going all the way to the other side. And all I'm doing is just, like a collar, I'm just pinning the ends to make sure they're in the right place. And then when you cut out, make sure that all your fur is going down because that's what you want it to do so we're going to dinner tonight I don't know maybe I'm gonna wear this it's perfect this time of year is just perfect. But I really think the best look with the black is jeans. I love blue jeans or jean leggings either way. I don't think it would matter. White t-shirt. It's just such a great casual look. But they also know you haven't been painting the barn all day. So that's the good thing. Okay, so my collar is almost there. And like I said, I take the time to pin it just to make sure that my math is correct and where I added and, you know, all of that. So I've pinned it just all along the neck edge. And we're going to sew this with our sewing machine. And also I pin it because it's just a little easier than every time the fur is, you know, when I'm, pin I'm pinning it, I'm pushing the fur in between the two layers. 
so that now I've got it like that, all the fur is in between the two layers and it won't come back out. Okay, let's go to the sewing machine. We didn't put the camera in because I told them I'm not gonna sew in the sewing machine. But I'm gonna do this one seam on the sewing machine. And my stitch length is 3.5, just like I typically use. I'm using a 70-10 needle, same as I always use. I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Everything's the same, nothing's different. Just make sure all that fur is kind of poked in. That's what you want to make sure. And don't run over the pins. It's really hard for me to pull out pins as I go because it always feels so slow. That's it's worthwhile to slow down a little bit. Now again, I'm going to end up surging this seam because this seam, because you've got the way I'm sewing it, and you do not have to do it the way I'm doing it, you guys. I do not claim to be an expert on this. Um, I did ask quite a few people and I did talk to the fur, I talked to Donna. And so this is how they do it. But again, there she emphasized, <laughs> she said to me, we're not the experts. I said, if you're not the experts, who's the expert? She goes, well, this is just the way we have found to be the easiest. So that's what I'm passing along. My needle broke. Probably when I hit that shoulder seam, that needle broke. So I am going to change a needle. Hang on just one half a second so I don't lose that. It was right at the shoulder seam. So probably if I'd taken a little bit slower, it would have been okay get too rambunctious. And if your fur is popping out between, then I would recommend that you, you know, just add another pin or two. Okay, sorry guys, I'm gonna have to change my needle. All right, we can answer questions. I can actually change a needle and talk at the same time. I can't sew at the same time, but I can talk at the same time. I have no idea how long I had that needle on, so somehow I think if it broke, it was probably a good thing. Um, why aren't you use little clips? You can. You can. You can do whatever you want. I'm just a pinner girl and I use pins. That's all. They're sitting here, so I'm going to use them. But you can use whatever makes it easier for you. I personally think clips are a little harder. This is fur and it's kind of thicker. I think it's a little hard to get them open all the way. But if you don't, hey. Go for it. Okay, and then just curious, you sew so much. Aren't there ever times you don't feel inspired to sew? Um, I'm sure there are, but boy, I, I love to sew. I just, I don't love, I don't know if I love to sew how much, I love clothes. <laughs> and because they're so expensive, the ones I like, when I can sit down um, and make them in just such a short amount of time, you know, that really, I, I really enjoy that process. So are there ever times I'm not inspired to sew? Um, that's a good question, but probably not. I hate to say that, you guys. I really do love to sew. I'm really grateful that I can sew. I'm really grateful that the whole uh, concept was introduced to me when I was young because I was very tall and nothing fit, you know, everything was high water pants and my arms, I was a monkey. And so my mother, you know, was a sewer. That was her value system. 
Okay. We got that done. I'm just, I overstitched where that needle had broken, so I'm just going to clip those threads. I don't need to tie knots or anything like that. I think I'm all good. Okay, so let me just show you kind of, you can see, I hope you can see at least this. We'll try to come in with a needle, and I, I mean with a camera, and I know it's black. But see, that's actually the seam I was sewing. Oh my gosh, you can't even see that seam. It's so weird, you guys. This fur is so much fun. But so you can tell that there's something on there in the direction that it's changed. See, there's the, there's the um, seam. But you can see that it's, there it is. But you can see the fur is changing directions. But that's really all you can tell. You can't see the seam at all. It's pretty fun. And again, because I lowered it, I just loved it. I, I copied it off that vest that I showed you all on Thursday night. If you haven't had a chance to see it, go back and see it. Someone had sent me that. One of you had sent me that as a, one of the vests that's on Donna Salyer's site. And she wanted to know how to do that collar. So this is the reason I did it. So that you could kind of see just a really pretty simple little collar. Okay, so now we've got, um, we've got this seam I just did. And then you don't want to just leave that like that because if this, if this were to turn back a little bit, you'd want the inside to be covered. So that's why I did two layers of fur. All right, and we're going to do right sides together. We're just going to start, you know, right there at the end of the collar, which is at front. And I'm actually not going to pin this all the way. Now this seam I'm going to serge. Again, if you go back to Thursday, and I hate to keep referencing that, but there was a reason I did that. Um, I took a close-up picture when I was sewing this particular one, and I, I um, marked it A, B, and C. And B is the seam I'm sewing right now. It's the to very top of the collar. Like if you had a, a mandarin collar, it's the very top. It's not, it's not the neck edge. It's the very top. I'm sewing the two collars together now. So people have asked me, could you sew the two col the collar together first and then put it on? And yes, you could. But you just want to be careful. You know, yes, you could. So you, you can be the one to kind of decide how you're going to do that. So I'm going to start here at the front. Again, push all the fur kind of out of your way. And just go for it. It curves right at the beginning. And just watch your pins. So because I know these collars are cut the same, because I, I cut, once I cut them, I didn't cut them at the same time. But once I cut them, I had compared them together. So I'm just sewing on the second collar. I think it's completely feasible that you do, don't need that second collar and what you could do is you could like bind the edge with um, fabric or fold over elastic or I think there's all kinds of fun things you could do like that. I'm doing this because the fur vest that I was sent that was on uh, the Fabulous Fur site, this did have a double collar on it so that's why I went ahead and did this. And I'm just going to look ahead and make sure that I'm ending up in the same place, and I am. So I'm good to go, and I'm going to keep going. Then I'm on the other front, and it just curls around to the front. Okay. Now again, remember when you're sewing this fur, you guys, I mean, you know, the pieces are exact, but they just don't have to be exact because the fur is going to cover it all. So try not to sweat the small stuff. So you can see that I've got, um, you know, right now I did it right sides together. Here is where I'm going to turn this out. Look at that. Isn't that fun? It's so much fun. <gasps> this is so much fun to sew with, and it's so easy. So you can see there's the ins inside portion. Let me cut this off.
there's the inside portion. And so the bottom of this piece now is what I'm going to sew to that first seam that I just did. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it by pushing all the fur away from it. So I'm going to sew this together. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to serge it. And that's why I didn't serge that original seam, so there wouldn't be so many stitches to stitch through. So there's the collar. Can I see this? Okay, there's the collar. There's the seam I just did. This comes over here because there's two layers. I'm going to push the fur up, and I'm going to stitch the edge of this to that first seam I sewed, just like you would have uh, like a cuff if you sewed one side and then you flipped it over. And so that whole neck edge, you can see, will have that double fur. And it's just beautiful the way it hangs. Okay, so let's do that last seam. And again, you could do it all in the sewing machine because the fur comes over and it's not like it shows. So when you do talk about lining a fur, I think a lot of it is cosmetic. I mean, I've looked at the stuff Donna makes because she was on the PBS TV show and you know, when you're sewing for Saks and Bergdorf Goodman and the places where her stuff is sold, you have to line. You know, you can't propose to have a fur coat that doesn't have lining in it. So she has to line. But if you're doing it for yourself, I don't know that you have to line. I, I, I haven't on several of mine. Do you leave a seam allowance at the end of the collar? I left it exactly as the pattern was. So the pattern had a seam allowance, so the collar has a seam allowance, yes. Can pattern number 75 Phillips case be used and leave off the top? Yes, that would be beautiful. That would be a beautiful little cape. Good, great idea. Hello, Peggy. My first time here watching you sew. Do you teach? Well, I think I'm teaching now, aren't I? <laughs> I think that I don't want to be put up as a teacher, but um, I teach pattern making and fit. I think that's really what I teach. The rest of this is just <laughs> something to do on a Saturday. Did you change your serger needle at all? No, I didn't change anything at all. The same serger needles, one may break because I've had them on for a long, I don't even know the last time I changed a serger needle, to be honest. But my, with my philosophy on this, I just let them break and then I change them, so they may break. You may see me change them. <laughs> but even if they do, you don't have to change it for a long time after that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and serge this neckline. And then next, what we're gonna do is we're going to put in the sleeves. Okay, so push that up there. Push the fur out of the way, and we're going to start sewing. Yeah, I think the thing that takes the most time is to get the fur out of the way. Clearly, right? So I'm just following the first stitch I did. I did it on the sewing machine. And then I'm just kind of making sure that fur is going the way I want it to. This is this is going to be on the inside of the jacket. It's on the neck edge. It's not like anybody's going to see it. But I still just, you know, for me, I just want it to look nice. And if you were going to line, I would secure the lining in at this point. someone with a bear <laughs> but you guys there's so many pretty things like Thursday when I was showing there's so many beautiful things that are done just with a little bit of fur it's so pretty whoops I was off a little bit I'm gonna jump back on there we go I missed that. I missed that middle part just a little bit, but I can go back and get that. All right. You know, when
when I showed you guys earlier this, um, okay, that color is really pretty. When I showed you earlier that this one, that um, the real fur, the, the wine colored one, like if you don't want to, if you're worried about putting a collar on, it, it's really just three stitches. It's very simple to do. You don't have to do a collar. You could always just take a, um, first off, you could leave the neckline. That one I've just left. I left it um, cut just like 600. This one's pattern 602. I left it just like pattern 600 and um, the fur comes up over the neck edge. The only reason I did this one is I really wanted y'all to show how to do that neck edge that was on that vest on Thursday night. All right, so that's all done. And it's beautiful. Okay, could you hand sew or tack it down? Yes, you could. You could hand sew, tack it. You could do the whole thing by hand. There's not that many seams. Remember, we're at, how many have we done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We only have four seams left. So you could do this whole thing by, you know, machine, if, I mean, by hand if you wanted to. Okay, we're gonna do the sleeves. Now I have done the sleeves, I've uh, done the, the three quarter length. I shortened them a little bit. Let's see, could you skip sewing the fur collar to the stitch seam or just fold it over? It would stay put, yeah, it would. I just wanted to show you how she had done it. That's all, you guys. You'll find that, you know, fur, there's a lot of easier ways, very simple ways to do what I'm doing. Again, I just wanted to kind of show you. Okay, so let's put in a sleeve. Remember, do the same thing. Put, this, put the sleeve side down when you're sewing in a sleeve, just like you would, and let's go. I've got fur on my toes here because my sleeve is there. And then I'm just going to go, as I look ahead a little bit of a section, I'm sewing two layers together. I did pin the middle of the sleeve because that should hit at the shoulder seam. So I just wanted to make sure that I'm in the right place. And we're on seam number, what did I say, eight? So here's my shoulder seam, and there's my pin. A shoulder seam should always go to the back. So just kind of orientate yourself so that you make sure your shoulder seam gets to the back. It's a serge seam, so it doesn't make that much difference. And that you're, when you're dealing with fur, you can lose pins really easily, so don't lose your pins. I just took out my sleeve because that's the center. kind of look ahead and the machine will just eat up your it'll eat up your ease so you don't really need to worry about your ease and here's my sleeve oh my gosh it's so beautiful it's so beautiful all right you don't have to iron it because guess what you can't iron fur all right, I'm gonna put it on when we're finished, you guys. All right, let's just, this is kind of kind of boring here. We'll just put, do the other sleeve, goes on the other side. So the only thing I do is I just fold it in half to make sure that, you know, the middle part comes up, is at this shoulder seam. Then just make sure all the fur is out of the way. It's funny how um, each part is not hard, but boy, does it sure look good when you're getting through it all. Okay, right sides together, sleeve side down. Remember, this is only a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So don't try to do it with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, you guys. Our patterns only have 3 8 but if you're using somebody else's, get rid of those seam allowances. And just so that I don't leave it there, I'm gonna cut that off now. 
and it's it's the last part you know when you start and you have all these different pieces this is the last piece we've actually got the whole jacket into one piece now oh this is so much fun oh my gosh you know what earlier I said I'm not sure that I enjoy the sewing so much as I love the clothes. It's not true. I love the sewing part, especially, and don't take this wrong, <laughs> but when I'm by myself, it's really kind of my time. And I think one thing that was really hard for me to do in the very beginning was to sew in front of you all because it's kind of like my time. And now I get that it's, you know, you know, I don't know. I get it. I, I, I'm okay. But I still really enjoy sewing because it's just, Almost my time for me. That just kind of flipped around and turned up in your um, needle. Make sure that doesn't happen. Then just project ahead and this is coming out just perfect. So yours will too. It was pretty easy, huh? Okay, we turn it inside out so you can see the sleeve seam. Oh my goodness, that is just profoundly beautiful. I just can't believe how beautiful this stuff is. I know I've said that more than once, I'm sorry. What is between your serger thread? One has yellow and the other pink. Um, just the size of the cone I started with. So we sell two sizes. We sell a 5,000 cone and a 10,000 cone. And so these were the 5,000. Those were the 10,000. I put the 10,000s on the bigger ones because they use up more. And then I use usually use the smaller ones. I use 5,000. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the last seam. This is number 10 and 11. And so just like when you sew the blouse, you're gonna turn it to the inside you're going to do this underarm seam. It's all going to be done in one fail swoop. If you decide you want it shorter, like I cut these three quarter sleeves and I think they're what I like, you can always still cut them off. You can still shorten the jacket or shorten the sleeve if you want. Lovely style. Do you think Max's jacket would also be somewhat similar effect? I think I want to jump in the shoulder pad trend. 1950 would be beautiful. Now keep in mind though, I wouldn't, so I'm using the Vertical Fox today. The Vertical Fox has, and that's, um, just so I get the numbers right, it's 4125. It has, lin it's linear. The lines are linear. Don't use the Vertical Fox with Max's jacket because Max's jacket is a shawl collar and it's a curved, they're curved edges. So I'm gonna show you when this is done how literally those vertical lines look so nicely when they're all done in one. So, you know, I didn't think about that when you asked me earlier, why didn't I choose a jacket? Because this is better because of the pattern of the fibers. And I'll show you when it's finished. It's, it's better done as one piece rather than piecing it. If you were to piece it, you'd need to be much more careful about how you pieced it. And again, that's not hard. It's just another layer to think about. And I wanted to keep it simplistic. And you're going to see this is really simple and really beautiful. But do I think 1950 would be gorgeous? Um, like in the one I have on? Yes. Which this is the mosaic, which is 4126, or the melange would be really pretty too. Okay, so remember I'm doing, right now, I'm doing the um, sleeve seam and I'm coming to the underarm seam and my seams are aligning, so I'm in good shape. And then I'm gonna uh, transfer down and I'm gonna do the side seam. And the only thing I would say is when you're going over those um, underarm seams, which is what I just went through, just take it a little slower on your serger. And now I'm at the dart. And then coming down the side. Coming, 
She'll be gumming around the mountain when she comes. <laughs> Just push all that fur into the middle. I shortened this jacket, or this blouse, I should say. Um, and what I did is when I shortened it, um, the bottom of 600 kind of has a side seam, but then it has a shirt tail hem that curls around to the front. Where the side seam was, I just cut it straight over. That's where I decided I wanted my length to stop. And again, I, I felt like I didn't want it to be a long jacket. I wanted it to be a short little jacket. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Okay, let's do one more seam and then I'm gonna put it on. Oh, question, sorry. How often do you change the knife of your serger? Good question. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Like, you know, I take my machine in to be serviced and I think they fix it then. So I take my machine in about once a year. That's what I do. question is do you use one yard for this no I had to use two yards for this for the vest I have on um, depending on your size you can get by with one yard because I could lay all my pieces out and then my collar I got out of the edge but I mean I did not have one bit of scrap you guys not a bit of scrap that was not fun it's fun to have scraps so this um, jacket I'm making here I use two yards and I have some really pretty scraps I'm very excited I promise I won't do fur YouTubes for the next six months, but I really am excited about this fur. It's so pretty. It's really very, very pretty. Okay, so my side seams are just exactly, again, where I want them to be. They're aligning. And as I come down, there's my dart. Guess what? Turn off the lights, the party's over. <laughs> All right, how much fur did you use for this jacket? This jacket right here, I used two yards. I actually cut two yards before I started so that I could see how much I needed, and I used two yards. Having said that, I do have left over, but I still had to have the length of the two yards. I couldn't have had less, so. You're going to have to do the two yards because the length of the body and then the length of the sleeve. And I still, I took five inches off the bottom of the sleeve because I wanted to do a three quarter sleeve. Okay, so I'm going to put this on. I'm going to finish answering questions. I'm sorry. When you measure a three eighths inch seam on your serger, uh, is it measured from the left needle? Yes. Yes. Measure from the left needle. I'm using a four thread. So when you're using a four thread, you measure from the left needle. Obviously, if you're using a three thread, you lose your left needle. No, is that right? Yeah, you lose your left needle. Will you show us what to do with the scraps? I kind of did, you guys, at the end of Thursday night on, on that YouTube that I did, I showed you um, a whole bunch of like headbands. There was really cute things. The, my favorite is that LaPointe. It's a sweater and they just put it on the bottom of the sleeves. That sweater was like $800. It was so beautiful and so simply done. It was just a beautiful, I think the one I showed you was winter white. I can't remember the color, but just a beautiful black knit with just really pretty cuffs. Like <laughs> that's first on my list. But there was uh, the, the shawl that I showed you with those pockets. That was a $2,000 shawl. There was all kinds of pretty things. Go back to Thursday night and you'll see some fun stuff I did with the scraps, okay? Last year, you guys, I did a lot of wraps to where somebody said, please, no more wraps. I'm afraid you're gonna start saying, please, no more fur. I just get excited and I get into a mode. And so I'm a little nervous that that, you know, you'll say, please stop. All right, so I'm gonna put this little jacket on. 
And again, I want you to see, I, I'm kind of uh, mic'd in here, so let me kind of undo wires just for a second. Okay, I think I'm okay. All right, we're gonna take that off. We're gonna put this on. And I wanna show you kind of the look I was going for, okay? So you can see it just comes to the front. So I went down in size so that it would minimize, I didn't want an overlap, just wanted it to come down. I did use the selvage up the front. I did because, um, I don't know, I felt like it would be a good pace, pacing for the lines. You can see the vertical lines. I'm gonna turn around for a minute. Can you all hear me still? I don't have my mic on. Can you hear okay? I guess they would say if they can. I'll put I'll put it back on here. It's hard on the fur just to figure out where it goes. Okay, so the linear lines I wanted to be uh, paced correctly. So I felt like if I started from the selvage on both the fronts, it would pace it, and then when I went to the back, you could see it as well. I only wanted a three quarter sleeve because. I have some beautiful bracelets and I love to show off the bracelet. So I felt like with that three quarter sleeve, it would still be a great way to not be in my way, but still show off a little bit of bracelet at the bottom. A three quarter sleeve is actually called the bracelet length. So that's, that was the goal. So I don't have a mirror and I can't see, but I love it. I don't know if I love how it looks, but I sure love how it feels. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. And again, you know, you can put clasps on it. You could put a tie at the waist if you just wanted a tie. Ah, look at that, what time is it? An hour, you guys, can you believe it? An hour, you can have a little fur jacket. It hangs straight, because you can see I've got the darts, and the darts, you know, change direction. Oh, it's too cute. It's too cute. Okay, let's answer questions. I'll settle down here. <laughs> now there is a little bit of mess down here. And that probably was just from my remnant edges. But it's really not bad. And you'll get, you know, you'll get a little bit. And you know what, I love this one too. But I love the sleeves. I don't know something about the sleeves. I just really not that I have to choose. I am a spoiled girl. I am well aware, kids. I am well aware. You know, spoiling, I, I always thought growing up that a woman can never have too many clothes. So I don't know if I really believe that or not at this point. So if I wanted to jack up below the hips in size four, I'll need three yards, yes. Yeah, I would definitely, if you want that jacket to go a little bit longer, then I would go for another yard. Think a yard for short jacket, two yards for longer jacket with sleeves, a yard or two yards for vest, depending on how long you want it. Um, and then that's how that can help you decide. And also, you guys, we have the width on here. You can take the pattern pieces you want and just kind of lay them out on fabric to make sure you can get all the pieces you want and lay them out. See, I love this collar. I just love how it lays. Ah, okay, sorry. Any other questions? <laughs> We're doing okay? This was way too much fun. So we have the vertical fox, the mosaic, which is these beautiful colors all put together. I love this one because it has this wine in it. It's beautiful. And then we have this melange, which is medley. There's a little out swing in the back. There's a little out swing in the back. Is there? I, I can't see it. It could have been just the way I was standing. I would not, I don't, is there? I don't, I don't, darts would help it, but I wouldn't put darts on this, you guys. The whole reason of having a little short jacket is that um, you want, it, you let the rest of your body dressing do the slimming, like, you know, it's short, so wear a fitted pair of jeans or wear leggings or wear something else. Because of the lines in the jacket, you don't want to put darts interrupting those lines okay so that's why I did I left out the darts so I think I maybe just didn't have it on in the front but I think it's hanging straight in the back that could be my mic pack that y'all are looking at I got a big old mic pack back on my rear end <laughs> okay 
but I'm happy with the way the back of it looks from what I can see. I can only see this little tiny monitor right here. All right. No, don't do darts in the vertical fox. You can do darts in the, in the mosaic and you can do darts in these, um, but because they're vertical, you know, and the other day I showed you all a jacket that was really cute. The vertical ran um, diagonally. That I thought would be a really cute idea. Again, remember my job is to give you the inspiration. Your guys is to take it up a notch, okay? My, we're at the base. So what you'll find is when you start working with it, how much fun it is and how much fun you'll have and how easy it is. It's so easy. It's so easy to fall in love. Okay, I missed it, but did you sew the neck of the collar to the body of the jacket? Yes, that was on the serger. Yes, well, the first round was on the sewing machine, breaking the needle, breaking the needle, I broke the needle, but now I have a new needle on. And the second one was on the serger, okay? You missed it, you must have, well, it only took a minute, so you must have stepped out. Um, the embellishments on your t-shirt on the site. Yeah, that's that mo That's that chain. I love the chain, you guys. I love that chain. So I put it on all kinds of weird things. And again, because I, sometimes when I go into something, I get a little crazed. I don't show you all that I do. <laughs> but it is, um, yes, you can put the little chain right down the front. Sorry. Okay. All right. I don't know what else to tell you except happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns. I think it's a wrap. And in an hour, you can make a little fur jacket that they're hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars, and you can make one for not a lot. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. For all of you who bought the new patterns, by the way, we're shipping them. <gasps> we started shipping. Yay! We're so excited. So you should have them in the next few days. Thank you all. We love you. Happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns. Bye!